Hello, this is Keith welcoming you to the 2095th edition of the Enfield Talking Newspaper, dateline the 4th of May 2017. The readers this week are Janet, Sonia, Sally and Keith, with Robin on the controls. The editor was Janet and the production and distribution team is Alan, Ali and Philip. Our title music is Country Rock Polka, composed by Pat Prilly, Ferdinand Bouillon and Harry Brewer and is performed by Jean-Jacques Perry. It's used with his kind permission. The local news stories that we will be reading come from our local newspapers, the Enfield Gazette and Advertiser and the Enfield Independent, and are their copyright. The events information has been collated by us from other sources. The local news headlines this week include Spurs fan attacked after football game and fire tragedy. First, the sunrise and sunset times for tomorrow, the 5th of May. Sunrise, 5.27. Sunset, 20.27. Do get in touch with us to share your own news and special announcements. We love to hear from you. If you have any comments about the Enfield Talking newspaper, please phone Diane de Jersey on 020 8805 6578. She is your listener's representative and she will be pleased to help you. That's Diane Jersey on 020-8805-6578. Now Janet will read the first item of local news. Fire tragedy. Woman's death in blaze leaves neighbourhood in shock. Neighbours have spoken of their shock after a Bush Hill Park woman died in a house fire in the early hours of Monday the 1st of May. The woman, who has not been named, was said to have lived alone in the house in Alberta Road, where fire broke out in the living room at about 1.30am. Neighbour Jack Noakes, who lives opposite, said he saw the lounge window bowing under the heat. He says neighbours were banging on her front door trying to wake her up. It's just tragic, tragic, a great shame. Firefighters use breathing apparatus to tackle the blaze, the cause of which is being investigated. London Fire Brigade Station Manager Daniel Alley said, Fire crews gained access through the front door and made their way searching through the property. They found the casualty in the kitchen and she was pulled out straight away. Crews did their best to resuscitate her before she was passed on to ambulance crews but she was declared dead at the scene. Neighbours said they didn't know the victim, who was a private person who kept herself to herself. They said she was in her late 50s or early 60s, lived alone and worked in an office, possibly in central London. Neighbour Jill Merrill, who is liaison officer for the local residents' association, said, everyone is shocked. We're all very sad for her. It's a horrible thing to have happened. The fire brigade were wonderful, she added. They went around giving out smoke alarms to everybody. Firefighters say the alarm was raised by a neighbour at 1.33am and that the first fire engine was on the scene within five minutes. Two fire engines from Enfield Station attended, along with two from Edmonton, and the fire was under control by 3.10am. Spurs fan attacked after football game. An image has been released of the Tottenham fan seriously injured in an attack by fellow supporters after FA Cup semi-final at Wembley. Michael Voller, a 23-year-old, was attacked outside Wembley Stadium after he had watched his side's 4-2 defeat to Chelsea with friends last Saturday. Police believe Mr Voller was attacked by other Tottenham supporters after he was mistaken as a Chelsea fan. He was punched in the face, causing him serious injuries, including a broken cheekbone, eye socket and skull. Doctors believe the damage may leave lasting damage to his eyesight. The incident took place around 7.30pm outside Moor Spice Indian Restaurant, on Engineers Way near the stadium. Mr Voller, 
who also used to work at Spurs Enfield training ground, was walking past the restaurant when he was identified and targeted by another group of Tottenham fans walking in the opposite direction. It is believed that one of the group then mistook him for a rival Chelsea supporter and punched him in the face, leaving him injured. Mr Voller was admitted to hospital later that evening, but doctors have since discharged him. He continues to receive treatment, but doctors are concerned over potentially permanent damage to his eyesight. Police have now identified a suspect they would like to speak with in connection with the attack. He is described as a white man in his early 20s and approximately 5 foot 10 inches tall. He was wearing a black hooded top or jacket on the day of the incident. Investigating officer DC James Robb of Brent CID said, This was a violent and unprovoked assault that has left a young man with some terrible injuries that could end up affecting him for the rest of his life. This kind of violence has absolutely no place at a football match. And I sincerely hope that those who were with the person responsible do the right thing by Michael, who is a fellow supporter and has supported Tottenham since he was a young boy. I would appeal to all Spurs fans to think hard about whether they have any information about the person who did this. I have no doubt that there will be several people who know who did this, and I would appeal to anyone with information to get in touch with us or to contact Crime Stoppers. Anyone with information regarding the assault or the identity of the suspect is asked to call police on 020 8733 3737 or Crime Stoppers anonymously on 0800 555 111. Schoolgirl Chardonnay on course for place at Harvard. A sixth form student from Enfield will be jetting off to live in America after securing a place to study at one of the world's most prestigious universities. A-level pupil Chardonnay Deslandes from Kingsmead in Southbury Road will begin a four-year course in August at Harvard University in Massachusetts. Harvard is world-renowned and is the oldest institution of higher education in the United States. Postgraduates include American President John F. Kennedy, who was assassinated in 1963, Chardonnay applied to study at seven American universities and when the 18-year-old received her acceptance letter, she was overwhelmed with joy. I was on the phone to a friend when I found out I got into Harvard and I just started crying, she said. I was really shocked. Chardonnay, who lives in Alberta Road, Bushill Park, had always set her heights on studying abroad and will begin her first year as a fresher student, majoring in government and minoring in social anthropology. She said her decision to study at Harvard was swayed by its liberal arts program, which involves social and natural sciences, as well as humanities. I'm looking forward to exploring subjects outside my main field of study, she said. She added that her friends had been a beacon of support throughout the application process and were thrilled with her achievement. My best friend is already planning her first visit to come and see me, she said. Among the homely possessions packed in Chardonnay's suitcase will be a supply of tea bags. She visited the university for three days to explore the campus and to meet the new students starting in August. Everyone was so friendly and Americans are really easy to talk to, she said. While on campus, she had the chance to attend a political debate between student Republican and Democratic supporters. 
After graduating, she plans on studying a master's degree in England and is hoping to pursue a career with the United Nations or a governmental organization. If you believe in yourself and you strive for something that really matters, then it really is achievable, she added. Stay away from Retail Park, pupils are told, after spate of attacks. A school's students have been banned from visiting a popular retail park after three of them were injured following a spate of violent muggings and attacks by groups of older youths. Youngsters at St Ignatius College in Turkey Street, Enfield, have been prohibited from going to Enfield Retail Park on the A10 Great Cambridge Road after school following a string of street robberies and antisocial behaviour involving pupils gathering in the vicinity of McDonald's restaurant. There is no suggestion that any of the pupils at St Ignatius have been involved in the criminal activity, which is believed to involve younger pupils being threatened, bullied and robbed of mobile phones and valuables by older and bigger boys. The assistant head teacher of St Ignatius College has written to parents explaining the reasons for the restriction and the need to protect the safety of students. She writes, There has been a spate of robberies and attacks near McDonald's and other shops and outlets in Enfield Retail Park and three of our students were injured there recently. There have also been complaints from some businesses that students from some Enfield schools are congregating there after school and becoming involved in antisocial behaviour. In order to protect our students and ensure their safety, we have made the decision to prohibit our students from visiting the retail park after school. She adds, Please can I ask for your support in reinforcing this instruction with your child? Enfield police are aware of several incidents in which young people have been approached by groups of older youths demanding property, according to a post on the Spotted Enfield Facebook page. They say arrests have been made in relation to some of the thefts and urge students to continue reporting incidents. They recommend parents advise their children not to take expensive items or properties such as iPhones, tablet devices or large sums of cash with them when out on their own. They add, if they must take a phone with them for ease of contact, please do advise them not to show it off in public as it may seem very appealing to thieves. Please also advise them to travel in groups for safety and remain in lit, well-populated areas during darkness. Japanese seat unveiled in tribute to Garden's founder. Retired British Army officer Brigadier Andrew Parker Bowles, the great-great-nephew of acclaimed British gardener and botanist Edward Augustus Bowles, returned to Middleton House Gardens in Balls Cross, where his ancestor had lived from 1865 to 1954 in the Georgian mansion he inherited. Having established the beautiful English gardens there, he never achieved his dream of creating a Japanese-themed garden. But that was put right when the seat was unveiled in E.A. Bowles' memory. The seat, known as a tori, has been crafted from iroka wood with a red cedar oriental style roof and is positioned overlooking the rock garden, which was E.A. Bowles' favourite spot and is where his ashes are scattered. Mr Parker Bowles, who is president of the E.A. Bowles of Middleton House Society, unveiled the seat. It's a great honour to be able to try out this lovely new Japanese-style seat, which I'm sure my ancestor E.A. Bowles would have loved, as he was enthusiastic about all things Japanese, he said. He had great hopes of introducing a Japanese theme into the gardens, but sadly it never happened. So now I can proudly say that his wish has come true. Also attending the ceremony were seven garden volunteers who were presented with long service medals and certificates by Paul Osborne, chairman of the Lee Valley Regional Park Authority, which runs Middleton House, along with the Society, which is celebrating its 25th anniversary. Cottages damaged in Broomfield Park blaze. 
Plans to restore a park's historic mansion to its former glory have suffered another blow after a suspected arson attack badly damaged derelict outbuildings at the weekend. The interior and roof of three cottages, which form part of the stable yard block connected to Grade 2 listed Broomfield House in Broomfield Park, Palmer's Green, were gutted by the blaze on Sunday the 30th of April. The mansion house, which was built in the 16th century, has remained derelict and surrounded by scaffolding for the past 20 years, after it was badly damaged by two fires in 1984 and 1994. Although the cottages only date back to the 19th century, their exterior wall, which runs along Broomfield Lane, was built in 1690, when wealthy city merchant Richard Spencer occupied the mansion. The stable yard buildings are included in any future restoration, said Colin Younger, chairman of the Broomfield House Trust, which has been seeking, with Enfield Council, to obtain grant funding to bring the house back to its original condition. The damage to the cottages is a setback, but it is not irreparable and won't have dire implications for the restoration project. Mr Younger said that the council had been exploring applying for an enterprise grant after its application for a £4 million heritage grant was turned down in 2016. Sorry, 2015. It is looking for a commercial partner to operate a cafe in the house. It also wants to convert the stables, which could be leased as commercially managed artists' studios. Mr Younger said he believed the fire had been started deliberately by intruders because there was no power to the buildings which could have caused it to start accidentally. He said there had been a spate of vandalism in the stable yard in the weeks before and although there were security cameras, the back entrance of the stable yard was not covered by CCTV. He discounted the possibility that the fire might have been associated with increased visitors to the park because of a travelling fair held there over the bank holiday weekend. There is a photo which shows the burnt-out cottages which formed part of the stable yard block. Can you volunteer? A volunteer for a charity helpline is calling for neighbours to join him in helping vulnerable elderly people. Graham Naylor of East Finchley has been volunteering with the Silver Line since 2015 after working with the Samaritans and seeing an advertisement about the service. Now the 34-year-old is urging other people from the area to join him in speaking to elderly people who are feeling isolated and lonely. He said, Loneliness is such a massive issue for all generations, and I know most people experience feelings of loneliness at some point in their lives. It has become a highlight of my week, and we both have gained much from the service. Mr Naylor was matched with an older person based on shared interests, and has a 30-minute conversation with them on the phone via a confidential online call system. The Silver Line was founded by Dame Esther Ranson in 2013, has received more than 1 million calls, and is open 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Research from the charity shows that 67% of their callers phone because they are lonely or isolated, 88% living alone and 54% who say they have no one to speak to. To join Graham and volunteer, contact volunteering at thesilverline.org.uk and the helpline number is 0800 Four seven zero eight zero nine zero. If you know any lonely elderly people, 
Moral responsibility to commit to fair trade. People have a moral responsibility to commit to fair trade, according to an Enfield councillor. Cabinet member Alan Sitkin is supporting the international movement and reconfirming the borough's long-standing devotion to the cause. His backing comes as the borough prepares to celebrate World Fair Trade Day on Saturday, May the 13th. Councillor Sitkin said, We have a moral responsibility to pay a fair price for the goods we consume, rather than exploit workers in the third world for the sake of a bargain. Bananas, chocolate, pineapples and coffee, the Enfield Catering Service and Staff Canteen use will continue to be sourced equitably. Councillor Sitkin continued, When you buy fair trade products, you can guarantee that the farmers who have worked hard to grow them get a minimum price. Fair trade is a way of giving regular support while enjoying high quality products at the same time. The fair trade movement is growing as people realise that they can help alleviate poverty and protect the environment by choosing free trade products. By participating in this international movement, Enfield Council is playing its part not only in fighting poverty amongst world farmers but also in in ensuring an equitable distribution. Millfield Theatre and the Dugdale Centre use Fair Trade goods. Fair Trade Day is the brainchild of the Fair Trade Foundation and is aimed at the provision of better prices for products, improved working conditions and more balanced terms of trade for farmers and workers. Enfield became a Fair Trade Borough in September 2008. For more information, visit www.fairtrade.org.uk. We have a picture here of a a character from Star Wars, a a stormtrooper outfit. Hence the headline, May the First to be with you. Youngsters danced merrily around the Maypole as they celebrated Southgate's 39th annual May Day Fair. Hundreds of festival goers cheered as this year's chosen May Queen, nine-year-old Lucy Tobin from Browns Green, was crowned by Deputy Lieutenant from Enfield, Anne Cable. About £4,000 was raised by Christchurch Southgate, who organised the event in the Green, and the money will be donated to its chosen beneficial charity, Haven House Children's Hospice, which is based in Woodford Green. Events including jousting, the popular fair games, throw a hoop and hook a duck, as well as a bucking bronco, which involved riders trying to stay mounted as they were thrown around by a mechanical ball. Highlands and Southgate air cadets performed a drill and helped to serve on the stalls with parents from Walker Primary School in Waterfall Road, Southgate. It's a really important day for the community to come together, said Philip Dawson, our own Philip, warden at Christchurch, who helped to organise the event. Traditional music included performance by British Isles and Beyond, who played Northern Frisk during the May Queen's crowning ceremony. We are an inclusive church, so everyone was welcome, and it's a nice time for residents to meet at the event before they go off on their summer holiday, added Mr Dawson. Don't lose your vote in upcoming elections. More and more people in Enfield are registering to vote. Hundreds of people have signed up to join the electoral register ahead of the general election on June the 8th. Enfield Council is urging people to get on the register before the deadline of Monday, May the 22nd. The easiest way to register to vote is by visiting https colon forward slash forward slash www.gov.uk forward slash register hyphen to hyphen vote and using the online registration service. People will need to give their name, address, date of birth and national insurance number. All those currently registered and eligible to vote 
uh, will, in the Enfield lot by-election, will already have received a poll card. Deliveries of poll cards for the general election are due to begin on Monday, May the 8th. Teenagers turn decorators. Armed with paint-splattered overalls and a roller in his hand, trainee construction worker Kissian Kumar Lloyd has helped transform Edmonton Leisure Centre. Along with nine others aged 16 to 19, he took part in the Volunteer It Yourself scheme aimed at enabling young people out of work or in training to learn a vocational trade and building skills. They spent two days painting and decorating the soft play area adjoining toilets and washrooms. Kissian, who is studying construction at the College of Haringey, Enfield and North East London, said, We've learnt new things by being on a proper job with different mentors compared to how we work and learn in college. It's great to know you're making a real difference to your community at the same time as working to a professional standard. A volunteer it yourself spokesman said the experience was invaluable because the majority of participants not only gained valuable work experience but also worked towards achieving a City and Guilds accreditation. Work was completed on time and within budget. Participants were given free annual membership to the Leisure Centre as a reward. Tim Mills, Business Development Director at Fusion Lifestyle, a charity that runs leisure centres in the borough, including Edmonton, said, This is our second par partnership with Volunteer It Yourself, and we're delighted to be working together to deliver real benefits to the young people in the communities we serve. A bigger canvas for talented young artists. Budding artists from Enfield Primary Schools will have their work displayed on a huge hoarding outside Chase Farm Hospital's redevelopment after being shortlisted in competition. A total of 12 schools entered their artwork from Year 5 and 6 based on a festival theme for the Mayor of Enfield Award for Visual Arts. The project was run by Enfield Council in partnership with Barnet and Southgate College who provided art and design training to primary school teachers in Enfield. Winners of the competition were announced by Upper Edmonton Ward Councillor Patricia Etchie at the college's campus in High Street Southgate where the exhibition was open to the public until the 5th of May. The shortlisted artwork and winners of the competition will have their work unveiled on the boards outside Chase Farm in the Ridgeway next month, courtesy of Vinci Construction, while work gets way on the redevelopment. We have been delighted with the success of the Mayor's Award for Visual Arts this year, said Gwyneth Hammond, the Council's Learning Consultant for Enrichment and Progression. Barnet and Southgate College have done a great job running the training for teachers and supporting the competition. Alison Cook, Creative Arts Curriculum Manager from Barnet and Southgate College, said the standard of entries had been truly outstanding and she had been really impressed with the use of techniques and colours. Become a champion. A community-led group is leading the way to re-establish dignity and self-worth. Newly launched safety champions in Tottenham work together to develop networks of volunteers to report crime to police and assist with the upkeep of resident districts. It's intended that the scheme invoke a sense of civic pride and empowerment in men and women who feel demoralised by the run-down conditions of their living spaces. Safety champion Carl Biddle said, I joined the safety champions because I had had enough. Coming out of my flat today, I had to use the stairwell and there's a door leading to the stairs and I had to push against three people who were just sleeping in the area and that's the only way out. People are just sleeping rough in the halls and the stairwell. 
There's also a lot of antisocial behaviour in the building. Mr Biddle urges like-minded individuals to pull together and work for a greater common good before the situation worsens. He added, if you get enough people coming together and saying we're not happy with this, let's do something, then things can change. And then hopefully we can also get people in authority to listen and help us. Safety champions meet once a month at 163 Park Lane between 9.30am and 12.45am. Meetings are scheduled for May the 16th, June the 13th and July the 3rd. For more information, email tottenhamregeneration at haringay.gov.uk or call 0208 489 2577. Five contenders bid to replace outgoing Aussie. Five contenders have thrown their hat into the ring to be the new councillor for Enfield Lock. The resignation of Labour's Aussie Uzoanya prompted a flurry of activity with five of the parties nominating candidates. Christine Bellas is standing for the Tories, Elif Elbil for Labour, Kate McGeever for the Green Party, Richard Morgan Ash for the Liberal Democrats and Gary Robbins for UKIP. Enfield Lock residents will have the chance to vote at the by-election on Thursday, May the 18th, when polling stations will be open from 7am to 10pm. Mr Uzoanya quit as one of the three ward councillors at the end of March. It is with deep regret that due to family reasons, I will be resigning from my position as a councillor for Enfield Lock, he said at the time. In six years I have served on the council, I have taken great pride in seeing a Labour administration work tremendously hard for all residents across the borough. I would like to thank council staff and partners for its ongoing efforts to improve Enfield as a whole. I would also like to thank the people of Enfield Lock who put their faith in electing me twice to serve. It's been a privilege and an honour to serve you. There are 63 members of Enfield Council, 41 Labour and 22 Conservative and the last borough election was held in 2014. Why being active is the right way to go. The health benefits of cycling and walking in significantly reducing heart disease and cancer published in a study has been welcomed by Enfield Council's Cabinet members. According to the findings in the British Medical Journal by the University of Glasgow, adults who cycle to work are 45% less likely to develop heart disease and cancer. The study also shows that commuters who walk to work up to six miles a week are 27% less likely to develop heart disease than those who drive or use public transport. Crystal von Younger, Cabinet Member for Community Safety and Public Health, said the study highlighted the need for residents to take exercise seriously. This evidence demonstrates that the Council's efforts to get people more active through our Move More campaign is the right way to improve the health of residents, she said. This research shows that Enfield is more than playing its part in helping people to live long and healthy lives. Daniel Anderson, Cabinet Member for Environment, added that the study supported efforts to promote exercise through cycling schemes. This research shows that the Council is vindicated in its pioneering efforts to transform our high streets and town centres, promote more active forms of travel and create safe and secure cycle lanes, he said. Footy stars win big. The college football team has arrived back home from an international tournament undefeated. Players from the College of Haringey, Enfield and North East London 
travelled to Barcelona to challenge in the Mare Nostrum Cup, an internationally renowned competition that took place from April the 13th to the 16th. It attracts over 200 teams from many countries around the world annually. Head of Sport Jonathan Silman said, The boys have had a great experience and performed very well against tough opposition. A victory against Spanish side CD Iruna and score draws in their next two matches were insufficient for the semi-finals. Mr Silman explained, Unfortunately, due to results from the other leagues, we did not progress to the semi-finals. But to travel for our first tour and come away undefeated was a real coup for our football academy. Whilst touring the Spanish city, the players had an opportunity to visit the home of FC Barcelona, which is called the New Camp, and the Port Ventura theme park. The football club also provides coaching and physiotherapy. Got a picture of three ladies or young girls who have created a very stunning picture with a motor car and an angel. Making an exhibition of themselves is the headline. The diverse culture of Edmonton's residents has been represented in an art exhibition by 300 primary school pupils. Celebrating Diverse Edmonton is showcasing a range of artwork to portray the area in a positive light as a month-long exhibition at Ridge Avenue Library in Winchmore Hill until Friday, May the 19th. Wilbury Primary in Wilbury Way was one of 11 Edmonton schools which took part in workshops across six-week sessions. Katie Baldwin, Year 5 teacher at Wilbury Primary, said, The project was a nice opportunity for pupils to explore art, as many hadn't visited galleries. They were very creative and enjoyed working around the theme of Edmonton's diverse community and what they considered important in the area, she said. A total of 15 students from years four and six took part in the workshops, which were run by a charity, Art Start. Their artwork created from different materials included 3D sculptures representing a range of nationalities. We wanted to counter the bad image often associated with the area, said Kika Kshalambas, project manager at Edmonton Community Partnership, who organised the initiative. Children were really keen to share what they loved about Edmonton and were able to express this through their artwork. The exhibition was unveiled to guests, including parents and teachers, last Thursday and was officially opened by Enfield artist A.J. Tracy, who is known for creating artwork from materials he finds on the street. School fundraisers set for South America Adventure. A group of Enfield students are going to one of the most beautiful places in the world to help put the finishing touches to a school they have funded. Seven pupils from Winchmore School in the Burnham Grove have banked almost £5,000 each through a series of fundraising events and donations from their community to pay for flights and a new school in Ecuador. The lucky pupils, aged between 15 and 18, will spend a month working with remote communities, teaching an English class. The final week will be spent in the Galapagos Islands, a double World Heritage Site, both land and sea are protected, that inspired Charles Darwin's theory of evolution. The youngest member, Theo Sergiu, said, We started talking about what we could do to put back into society. There was an earthquake in Quito, Ecuador's capital, in 2014, and that destroyed lots of buildings and homes. We've been funding a new school out there, so when we go, it will be in the final stages and we will be the first people to teach a lesson there. Theo has had to raise twice as much as the others, which he has managed, because he needs to take a carer with him. 
He had retinoblastoma when he was younger, a rare form of cancer almost exclusively found in young children. He is blind in his left eye and can barely see out of his right. He said, I've washed cars for money, given talks, been networking with community businesses, had cake sales, just about everything. I'm so lucky to be going. It really is going to be the trip of a lifetime. I go for regular doctor's checks on my eyes, but I try not to worry and just enjoy life. Wendy Winter, the Economic and Wellbeing Coordinator at Winchmore School, said she was really proud of them. And there is a photo of three of the, the pupils, Georgina Hoy, Theo Sergiu and Juliet Gujurci, um, who have raised funds to help build a school in Ecuador. All change at the top as Tories ditch group leader. Enfield's Tory leader, Terry Neville, has been ousted. The long-standing politician who threw a party in December to celebrate 30 years as a Conservative councillor has been replaced by Joanne Laban. The majority of members voted for her at the Enfield Council Tory Group's annual meeting. Ms Laban, who was elected deputy leader in 2012, said, I am delighted. It's monumental to be the group's first woman leader and I'll be campaigning to get the Conservatives back into power in Enfield next year and to get more Conservative councillors. Mr Neville, aged 71, a lawyer and magistrate, said... There comes a time when there is seen to be a need for change. My main focus now is that we, the Conservatives, do well in the elections and we stand every chance. As far as Joanne goes, she's an ambitious young lady and I give her credit for that and wish her all the best. Mr Neville, who is a councillor for Grange Ward, was behind the smoking ban in the council's committee rooms and chamber and introduced wheelie bins, new street lighting and park police. In his early career as a solicitor, he brought about a legislation to regulate the number of sex shops in Soho. Southgate Ward Councillor Edward Smith, the Shadow Cabinet Member for Housing, is the Tory Group's new Deputy Leader. Sport now and in football, Town suffer playoff woe. Enfield Town's terrific season came to a disappointing conclusion when they were beaten 4 2 at Dulwich Hamlet in the Ryman Premier Division playoff semi finals. Having just missed out on a place in the playoffs in each of the last two years, Town finally managed to get over the line this time as they ended the regular season in fourth place to claim their highest ever finish at step three of non league football. This left them facing a trip to third place Dulwich in the playoff semi finals and a crowd of more than 2,500 people packed into Champion Hill to watch the match. Town got off to a terrible start as Ibra Sekaja put the hosts in front inside the first minute and then went on to complete a hat trick after little more than half an hour. Billy Crook gave the visitors a glimmer of hope by pulling one back prior to the interval, but there was to be no miraculous comeback and Gavin Tomlin effectively sealed Dulwich's victory by grabbing their fourth before Harry Ottaway scored a late consolation goal for town. Just 47 seconds had been played when Dulwich broke the deadlock as Sijaka burst into the box before producing a low shot which went through keeper Nathan McDonald's legs and into the net. The visitors responded well to this early setback but did not really threaten until the 29th minute when Carl Olieda unleashed a 20-yard shot which lacked power but was still fumbled by keeper Preston Edwards, who was able to pounce on the ball before it could cross the line. Within three minutes of this, the hosts had taken a firm grip on the match by scoring twice more, as Sekaja headed home Matt Drag's cross at the far post, before, from the resulting kick-off, Mark Kirby was dispossessed, 
and Drag played the ball up to Sakaja, who spotted MacDonald off his line and attempted a lob, which sailed over the stranded keeper and into the net. The visitors still refused to lie down, and they deservedly opened their account on 38 minutes, when a scramble from a corner ended with Crook squeezing the ball in at the near post. Oliada squandered a good chance prior to the interval, and Town carried their momentum into the start of the second half, with Harold Joseph blazing over, and Scott Shulton having a long-range effort turned away by Edwards. But the visitors were unable to get any reward for their good spell, and Dulwich went further ahead on 65 minutes when Tomlin drilled home from the edge of the box. Town came on strongly again in the closing stages, and Edwards saved brilliantly from Dernal Winter before Ottaway volleyed in Kirby's cross on 85 minutes, but the goal was too little too late, as it was Dulwich who progressed to the final. Meanwhile, Enfield Town's under-18s were crowned the overall Southern Counties Floodlit Youth League champions after securing a 4-3 aggregate triumph over Luton Town. Having drawn 2-2 in the first leg, Town won the second leg 2-1, with Ollie Wick and Kane James Thompson scoring their goals. Beauty contest creates a bond between women. A beauty competition finalist aims to use her experiences to galvanise others into action. Saffron Corcoran, 20, from Enfield, overcame mental health and low self-esteem as a teenager. She now has a place in the final of Miss Universe Great Britain 2017 to be held in July. Saffron said, I've entered Miss Universe Great Britain to inspire young women not to give up. During my teenage years, I struggled with my mental health. It took me a long time to believe in myself and realise that I had a life to lead. Miss Universe is a system that gives women a platform to spread awareness about their message and help others. It also creates a bond between women from afar, women whose paths would never have crossed otherwise. Saffron's female friends made through the competition include fitness instructor, dentist and a psychological graduate. She added, It lifts me up knowing that I'm surrounded by women of today who are taking charge of their futures. Miss Cochran said, Taking full advantage of this opportunity and raising money for charities of her choosing. She explained, this competition has allowed me to raise money for organisations that don't have a national following. Travelling throughout the United Kingdom on modelling assignments provides a perfect opportunity. When not globe trotting, Saffron loves watching Arsenal and was overjoyed with the recent semi-final FA Cup victory. Other hobbies include cooking and she enjoys eating dishes from around the world. She will host a curry night on Friday, June the 2nd to raise money. The National Miss Universe Great Britain finals are in Cardiff and Newport, Wales. An empowerment day is planned alongside fun fitness team building activities, a formal dinner at sponsor's restaurant Giovanni's. Categories include an interview with a panel of judges as well as modelling swimwear and an evening gown. Scores are calculated and the winner chosen from a final five competitors. The winner will then represent the United Kingdom against 90 other Miss Universe competitors. Cinema's new trustees will help keep film alive. A cinema has announced its new trustees to maintain its prominence on the high street. The Phoenix Cinema in East Finchley, whose charitable trust boasts patrons such as Dane Judy Dench, has welcomed experts from fundraising, media and marketing to help maintain its prominence. The cinema was built more than 100 years ago and is listed by English Heritage after being saved from demolition by the Community Trust in 1975. Trust Chairman James Kessler, QC, said, All our new appointments have a real love of film and a keen commitment to maintaining the vibrancy of their community 
of which the Phoenix Cinema is a key part. Our new members have an ideal mix of backgrounds and skills to make the most out of this unique and important local venue for the benefit of the community. New trustees are Alison Gold, former Head of Public Services Strategy at the BBC Trust, Marta Montague, Head of Development at the Institute of Fundraising, and Tim Hoang, Head of Social Media and Digital Marketing at the investment firm BlackRock. Firefighters cut woman from car. A woman trapped in a car had to be released by firefighters using specialist cutting equipment after two cars collided in Edmonton. She was taken to hospital by ambulance following the smash in 4th Street. Two adults and two children from the other vehicle got out before the fire brigade arrived. Paramedics confirmed that a man, a woman and a boy were treated at the scene. A spokeswoman for the London Fire Brigade said, We were called at 1541 and it was over for us at 1648. Fire crews from Tottenham, Walthamstow and Islington fire stations attended the incident. In rugby, Sarri's legends De Kock and Brown call time on careers. Saracen said an emotional farewell to two club legends as Neil De Kock and Kelly Brown both made the final appearances of their career in a scrappy 27-9 victory at home to Bristol in the Aviva Premiership. Scrum half De Kock, 38, and back row forward Brown, 34, have been with Sarri's for 11 and 7 years respectively and have helped the club to win three Premiership titles and be crowned European champions for the first time in their history. But the duo have now decided that the time is right to hang up their boots, with Brown set to take up a post as an academy coach with the club, while de Kock is moving back to his native South Africa. Both Kelly and Neil will go down as legends of this club, said director of rugby Mark McCall. Kelly has been an amazing player and person for Saracens. On the field, he has been unbelievably consistent, setting a superb example to our younger players and consistently giving everything he had. Off the field, he is one of the most selfless people you'll ever meet, always putting the team first. His decency and humility have always shone through in his time here. Neil will always be remembered as one of the true greats of Saracens. His contribution to this club over 11 years really is hard to put into words. Saris were able to give the duo a winning send-off, but they were well below their best in a match which also saw hooker Schalke Brits become just the 10th player to reach 200 appearances for the club. Petrus Duplessis, who had failed to previously score a try in 155 appearances for the club, led the way by touching down twice in a bonus point triumph, with Chris Ashton and Nick Tompkins also crossing the line. I think it was a really disappointing performance, McCall added. We've got certain standards that we want to aspire to, and we fell short of those. Saracens round off the regular premiership season at Wasps, needing a win to secure a home tie in the playoffs. A night hike for cancer. Superheroes who want to help fight cancer can do their bit in a night hike. Nightingale Cancer Support Centre wants people to pull on their masks, capes and lycra pants to take part in the 15 kilometre trek on May the 12th. They will take to the streets of Enfield from 8pm. Mental well-being art students put on show. Mind in Enfield is celebrating well-being and mental health with an exhibition from past and present evening art course students at the Dugdale Centre. The free to enter exhibition falls between Mental Health Week, 8th to the 14th of May, and London's Creativity and Wellbeing Week, 12th to the 18th of June. One student who wished to stay anonymous said, this class is unique 
and there is nothing like it in Enfield. The Dugdale Centre can be co contacted on 020 8807 6680 or you can visit box office at enfield.gov.uk. For more details about the next course, contact Jean Pasley on 020-8887-1497 or her email address jean.pasley at mind-in-enfield.org.uk and Pasley is spelt P-A-S-S-L-E-Y. We've reached the end of our programme for this week. Thank you for listening. So from the team of Janet, Sonia, Sally and Keith and Robin on the controls, it's goodbye. goodbye. Please remember to turn over the address label in your postal packet, put the memory stick into the packet and return it to us as soon as possible in readiness for the next edition. Don't forget you can call Diane de Jersey regarding any help you may require in connection with Enfield Talking Newspaper on 020 8805 6578. Coming up next, the latest news and information for the Greater London area from InfoSound. The Enfield Talking Newspaper will be with you again in one week's time.